Spoon Me Round was not one of them. And on the Monday morning, when we, we were at Marquee Studios, Pete Burns turned up with this cassette player and they'd written this song over the weekend, uh, which they demoed, which was Spin Me Round. And I said, right, let's forget, dump the rest. This is what we're going to record. <laughs> You Spin Me Round was Stock Aitken and Waterman's first chart topper, knocking Elaine Page off the number one spot. But the weird and wonderful Dead or Alive were a million miles away from the record industry's idea of pop stars. Pete Burns used to work in Probe Records in Liverpool, and I remember going in there, and he was absolutely terrifying. He had these like um, contact lenses in that made his eyes completely black. He was literally the last person you'd ever expect to have a number one record. Um, he kind of looked like a pop star, but not a number one pop star. The only advice I received off Mike Stark and Matt Aiken was tone down your image, cut your hair, scrap the makeup. Girls went fancy it. Pete Burns um, would always turn up in full makeup and drag, and uh, he's a tall guy anyway. Uh, you know, I'm only five foot six. He's got a booming voice as well. Uh, yeah, he's very. Booming. <laughs> so, in a way, it's a bit frightening. One point they complained to Pete Warsman that they were upset because the band kept turning up in the studio all dressed up and it made them feel poor. The unique sound of Dead or Alive's biggest hit was produced using the trio's hard-earned new studio equipment. Was that the first thing we did with the fair light? Uh, to be sure, no, I'm not sure we did. I think we did. But a technical glitch made the track more distinctive than they'd planned. Literally at two o'clock in the morning, the machine broke down and we had to wait for two hours for the engineer Mike Pickin, who was the maintenance engineer, to come from South End to fix it. By which time, I promise you, we had no idea what we were mixing anymore because we'd been working on it since 10 o'clock the previous day. And Pete Burns and the band walked into the studio at about 11.30 the next day and Phil Harding and I had not been to bed. And I honestly can tell you now, I, I couldn't hear anything. All I remember was saying to Phil, turn it up as loud as it can go so that the blood comes out of Pete Burns' ears. And as we played it, I saw these two and I could see that we'd left a sequencer in that shouldn't have been in. And I just went, stump, because I literally, I, I just couldn't take no more. And that's the synth that everybody picks up on. Pete Burns just was like a, like a kid in a candy store. The minute he heard it, he just went crazy because it really was so different and so innovative for the time. It was just completely different. It still sounds fresh today. It does sound mm -hmm. fresh today, yeah. Despite everyone's confidence in the track, it was not an instant smash hit. The record was stuck just before Christmas at about 40 to 41 in the charts. So Pete Burns assisted, we did another remix. And I remember thinking to myself, I, I just don't know where to go anymore with this. And we got the Fairlight. We just oh. bought the Fairlight. We did on the mix because we got oh, okay. some BBC sound effects records. Yes, yes, yes. And on this, on this sound effects record, there was two dogs having intercourse. And this was like, totally freaked me out. So we sampled it. Oh, 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 oh. So we <coughs> called it the TDF mix, the two dogs whack, whack mix. And I remember Epic ringing me and saying, what does TDF stand for? <laughs> and I went, Tour de Force mix. And it's called on the record label, Tour de Force. But everybody knew the true story. Everybody knew what this was. So there was this, over the Christmas period, everybody was after the TDF record. So come like January, they pressed it and woof, it, sh it shot straight to number one. And if it hadn't been for Spin Me, they wouldn't have gone on to have their major success with Banana Rama in America with Venus. Because Banana Rama went into them and said, you want to spin me? 
So they gave them Venus and that went to the war in America bigger than ours because it was three slappers. 